I'm sure you have a lot of questions about SQL Copilot in Azure SQL Database. How does it work? What's happening with your data? What are we doing going forward? Uh, well, you're in luck because you can get all the answers to all your questions in this episode, this week on Data Exposed. Hi, I'm Anna Hoffman, and welcome to this episode of Data Exposed. Today, I'm joined by Kendall again from the Copilot team and the SQL team. Uh, I don't know if you say SQL team or Copilot team, um, but Kendall, thanks so much for coming back on Data Exposed. Hey, thanks, Anna. Thanks for having me back again. Always a pleasure. And today, I'm really excited because we are going to do some rapid fire FAQs that people might have about the SQL Copilot that you talked about last time. And uh, for folks who might not have seen that episode, we'll put a link to it in the description. So please feel free if you're like, what the heck are they even talking about to go watch that video and then come back here. We'll, 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 we'll still be here. Uh, but uh, to kick it off, I wanted to just say like, really impressed by all the stuff that we've seen in SQL Copilot in Azure uh, and Azure SQL Database. Um, but I wanted to understand like, how does it, this Copilot actually work? That's a great question. Um, and we're just getting started, by the way. So there's going to be all kinds of really awesome things coming. Um, let me preface that question, or the answer rather, with I have a history as a SQL DBA, and I love internals. So I love to get to kind of pull back the curtain and peek at how are things actually happening under the hood. So let's talk about what happens when you, a user, go into the Azure portal and you ask a question. Right. And so this is where we start. Um, you're going to just ask a question to co-pilot through the Azure portal and recognizing that we're part of the Azure Copilot all up ecosystem. So there's a number of different things you could be asking a question about. It might not necessarily be just a SQL database question. And so there's a concept of an orchestrator that Azure Copilot has, which is going to identify what are we looking for, right? What are we asking questions about? And it's going to use things like your context and the question that you actually ask. So if you ask the question, say, why is my database slow? And you're actually on a SQL database blade, you're probably asking a question about a SQL database and not say a Mongo database or something else like that. So once Azure Copilot identifies that the SQL Copilot is the best bet to answer that question, that's where SQL Copilot comes in, and it's going to pass things off to, uh, to the SQL Copilot. And so uh, at this point, SQL Copilot is going to kick in, and it's going to use an LLM to identify what you're asking for, right? Are we asking about a configuration issue? Are we asking about a documentation kind of thing? Is it a, a performance issue? And um, it's going to try to figure out what you're looking for. And then once it understands what you're looking for, it's going to leverage data from a number of different sources to help and answer that question. So we might look at things like internal support systems. If you say, for example, ask, why is my database slow? There might be something going on with the Azure service um, that's happening at that time, or there might be something actually inside of your database as well. And so um, it might look at things like uh, service level information behind the scenes. It might look at dynamic management views, um, it might look at query store uh, to, to help answer that question if you're looking for top CPU consuming um, uh, queries, for example. And um, it's important to understand here that while it's doing all of this, there, there's a number of things that are happening. There's queries that are running, there's, uh, there's systems that are being accessed, and we're collecting telemetry, but only the telemetry that we need to assess system health. We're never going to store your prompts or your answers or, or the results that come back from your DMVs or anything else like that um, in order to help train systems or, or make the service better. We're only keeping what we need in session state to be able to answer your question and, uh, and get the, you the results that you're looking for, right? So it's very important to understand that, um, that we take this very seriously. We're using the Azure Open AI ecosystem for this. Um, so there's a set of rules and guardrails uh, that that define things like we're not sharing data with customers and we're not training models and whatnot. So once the uh, SQL skill uh, has figured out what is the answer to the question or what we think is the best answer to the question, we then send the results back to Azure Copilot for final assembly. And we do a couple of things here. 
Um, we check for, uh, for uh, accuracy. We also check to make sure that the results are not something, say, harmful, um, or they're, they're giving you bad advice, for example, or telling you something that, um, that would other, otherwise violate our principles um, of the Azure Copilot. And then at that point, your results are sent back to you and presented, uh, at which point you can either accept the results, uh, you can ask more questions, and then rinse and repeat. The process goes over again. That's awesome. It's pretty cool how many things are happening all in a very secure fashion, but in just a couple of seconds. So it's definitely super cool to see this, how it works. My next question is, what model is SQL Copilot using? That's a great question. So right now we're using GPT-4 for SQL Copilot. And there's the other half of that, which is the natural language to SQL. That's using GPT-3.5 Turbo. Uh, both of those models are based on training data that is based um, uh, on as current as September of 2021. And so um, obviously things have happened since then, say SQL 2022 was released. So we, we will supplement that with additional data from our public documentation to help improve the quality of our answers. Um, we've also found that sometimes we have to correct for LLM inaccuracies too. Um, for example, there's a misconception that SPIDs greater than 50 are all user queries, and sometimes that's not true. There can be system queries that go, uh, that go above 50 as well. So we're, we're looking to make sure we're delivering um, accurate data on top of the base data uh, that's part of that foundation model in um, GPT-4 and GPT-3.5 Turbo. Um, one other thing I'll note, since we're talking about models, we might actually even change at some point in the future which foundation model the service uses because new models become available and they become more accurate. They have more, uh, more parameters. They have more data associated with them. At the end of the day, our goal is to deliver a balance of quality and depth and speed. So we're going to use that uh, to help govern which models we actually will use for the service. Awesome. Cool. I love it. And just to touch on something, you kind of covered this when we were talking about both the telemetry that we keep and the data that's being sent to Azure OpenAI. Like a lot of people are probably a little bit concerned or maybe concerned about like, what, do, what are you guys doing Microsoft with my data? What's happening with it? So can you kind of enlighten us? Oh, perfect. Yeah, sure thing. I have a slide for you for this. Um, this we've talked about in almost every data exposed when we talk about what SQL Copilot does. And it's so important that it bears repeating. So. First thing is responses are grounded in your environment. That means we don't get to see the responses. We're not keeping that data anywhere. We're not sending it off to OpenAI to train. Um, there, I mentioned there's a set of guardrails around that. So if you look at the Azure AI uh, documentation, you'll notice things like your answers, uh, your prompts, your answers, um, your embeddings, any of the training data are not available to other customers. They're not available to OpenAI. They're not used to improve OpenAI models or to train or retrain or improve the service at all. Um, this is very, very important, and we take this very seriously. The second thing is Copilot only has access to the resources that you have access to. And so if you don't have permissions, for example, to run a DMV query or to look at Query Store, Copilot will not be able to do it on your behalf. There are certain things that uh, we can look at the, um, uh, the, I mentioned this like service status, for example, that are publicly available sources. But when it comes to sensitive data and especially your database, when it comes to running a query, for example, against your database, you have to have access to it in order for Copilot to have access to it. And um, just as I mentioned, anything, your prompts, your responses, we're not using it to train or do anything with improving the Azure uh, OpenAI Service Foundation models as well. So we take this very, very seriously. Good, I think everyone will be comforted by that. We're all a little, you know, rightfully so weary <laughs> about AI. Okay, so uh, speaking of being weary about AI, let's let's say, you know, we have NL to SQL support, you've talked to us before. It has DML and DDL support. So I'm trying to understand, we have a Bobby Tables type of scenario where Copilot goes and drops something. Yeah, that's not going to happen. Um, you know, I mentioned we take this very seriously. And what you'll notice is when you're in the natural language to SQL experience and you ask for NL to SQL to generate some kind of a query for you, you're always prompted to accept or reject that query. And even if you accept that query, it will not run it for you. You will have to actually 
run the query in the query editor. So at the end of the day, you're in charge. You're the pilot. Copilot's just helping you with this. And um, when it comes to something else like on the uh, the self help experience, when you're on the the sidecar and the um, the copilot experience, and you're asking questions about, say, is my database slow? We're never going to go run a query that will modify data or change configuration settings, especially around configuration settings. We've heard that sometimes some customers might say, um, hey, I would like you to change my compatibility level for me. We might provide you the query and the answer to actually go do that. At the end of the day, it's up to you to actually run that query. Copilot will not do that for you. And we would rather err on the side of caution and have you do that instead of Copilot doing it and suddenly we've made a mistake and that's not something you really wanted to do. So we would try very hard to avoid the little Bobby Tables scenario. Got it, I love it. But it means folks, you can't blame Copilot. So you have to be the pilot at the end of the day here and make sure uh, you know what, what you run on your database is the right thing to run. Uh, similar question, like, uh, when it comes to extensibility, let's say I want to uh, add my own skills or run custom scripts or something, or even like take this API and embed it into my application so I don't have to go to the Azure portal. Like, what are our thoughts on that uh, as Microsoft? So I think we'd like to get there one day. Um, today, we're just trying to get this right and give you a good experience in the Azure portal. So there's not an API that you can interface with or, or something where you can extend it in your own environment and provide any extra skills or anything else like that. Um, it's something we're we're looking at maybe one day, uh, but it's not there okay. yet. Okay, cool. Okay, so then now a couple really quick questions. Um, what about SQL Copilot for SQL Manage Instance and SQL in Azure VMs? Yeah, great question. You've probably noticed that those are PaaS services and um, the experience is, is absent there in the portal. Um, there's a few things that need to happen with the plumbing, uh, especially around um, uh, something like a managed instance scenario. Um, you can't just connect from, say, the Azure portal and run a query because typically those are, are uh, in subnets um, that are blocked off from the internet and, and not accessible without any kind of special VNet access. Um, so we'd like to get there one day as well. Um, we'd like to make sure it's a solid experience. So we don't want to give you something where, say, we can only give you half the answers about MI, but we can't actually look at your DMVs or anything else right. like that. So uh, one day we're working on getting there. Okay, and similar, what about SQL Server on-prem as well as like SQL Server just running somewhere else, not in Azure? Yeah, so that becomes a little more tricky because when you're on-prem or you're, you're not in Azure, then you have no Azure connectivity and all these things run in Azure OpenAI. Um, so what I'll say there is that's not an experience that we're just going to forget about, but stay tuned. Okay, got it. Watch this space, this SQL Copilot space. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. Okay. Um, all right. So we've also known and we've been hearing in you know social media, the news, whatever, uh, that like prompt engineering is a big thing now, and uh, you know like asking the right questions to get better answers or kind of tweaking what you ask. Like, do you have any tips from your experience on like what people should think about when they're doing this? Sure. Absolutely. Um... There's a couple of things that are going to apply, whether you're looking at a, a chat GPT or a Bing chat, um, or whether you're looking at it in a co-pilot. So the first and most important thing is your context matters. We're going to uh, derive the, the answers to your questions based off of, are you actually in a database blade, for example? So if you haven't selected a database and you ask, why is my database slow? We can give you a generic answer, but we can't actually run any queries uh, to look at your query store or DMVs or anything else like that. Now we're, we're trying to improve that experience. So we give you the opportunity to select a database, but it works best when you're actually in the context of a SQL database. And what you're asking for um, is going to matter as well. If you ask me, say, uh, give me a fragmentation check. What are my most fragmented indexes? That takes time, especially if you have a really large database to go run those queries versus say asking, What's my compatibility level of my database, which is just looking at some, uh, some metadata that's stored in a table. Um, we're not going to make database configuration changes. I mentioned that already. So uh, you'll have to actually hit the final execute button on that when we give you the query to run and um, use this as a co-pilot, right? If you have other things in your toolkit and all of us who have been managing and working with databases for a long time have our special queries that we like to run, you know, use those. Don't just leave those by the side. You can use those and co-pilot to help you get the answers that you're looking for uh, faster. 
And when it comes to NL to SQL, the natural language to SQL, a couple of other things uh, here that are helpful as well. Um, we're going to use table and view schema definition information for helping answer your questions when you say, um, tell me the top 10 sales uh, for the last year. So if you provide um, schema names, that can also help. We look at things like primary key and foreign key relationships. So um, if you're giving us expressive names on things, uh, give, giving us meaningful and descriptive table and column names, if you happen to know them, that will improve the quality of the queries that the natural language to SQL will generate. And we're looking at things in the future at how to improve that accuracy. Maybe we uh, allow you to, to have some additional context that you provide, say, giving us hints on naming conventions that you'd like to follow, um, or specific examples of prompts and query pairs. Uh, that's something that's coming down the road that we'd like to that we'd like to work on to help get better answers as well. Cool. Awesome. Okay. I have one more question for you. Uh, okay. Let's say I'm doing something and it's just not quite working. And I think there's a skill that I think the SQL Copilot needs that I really want. Um, can I suggest ideas for skills or how does it work? Yeah, absolutely. So I mentioned that we don't have the extensibility yet, but you can certainly give us your feedback. We value your feedback. Um, we actually look at the feedback every single day. So uh, this is important because when you um, go and you run a query and it doesn't give you, or you run a, a question rather, and you, you don't get the answer you're looking for, there's that thumbs up, that thumbs down that you can provide for us. If you do not share that information, all we get to see is, I thought it was great or I was unhappy with it. So if you're willing to share that information, please do check the box to share the prompts with us as well, because that helps us improve. And if you have something that goes beyond just, I didn't think you gave me an accurate result, and here's a, a skill where I think this would be really useful, you can reach out to us in an email. Um, we also look at the Azure Ideas, so aka.ms, SWAC SQL Feedback. If you put something out there, there's also a form that you can use here with Microsoft Forms to tell us a little bit more about a skill. Uh, we are definitely open to that feedback because we want to make this a great experience for you. Cool. Awesome. Well, Kendall, thanks so much for joining me on answering all the questions I had. Then I think a lot of users probably also have as well. Uh, if you're a user, go ahead and like this message, leave us a comment, let us know what you think. We'll put all those links for you to learn more and to give us feedback into the description. And we hope to see you next time on Data Exposed.